Hey guys, what's up? This is Francisco with Valerio Capital. And today we're going to do the market update video. So we're going to go to the market. We're going to take a look at the major indexes. And then there are some ETFs that we're going to take a look at. And then we're also going to take a look at some of the sentiment indicators so that we have a better understanding of what the market is trying to tell us right here. So remember, guys, that this video is for informational purposes only and is based solely on my opinion and is not financial advice. So now that we got that out of the way, let's start taking a look. Let's start taking a look at some of the charts. Right here in my screen, I have the ISIC, which is the NASDAQ composite in, in trading view. And what we have here, right, you can see that here is basically when we started the week, right? Right here on this day. And then we had a pretty strong move to the upside on Wednesday after the Fed meeting. You can see that move right here. We actually came into a declining 21 exponential moving average. And as you can see, if you have been following me, you know that I always have the, the weekly quant pivot labels, which are basically based on a standard deviations from the, from the starting point, from the opening point of the week. So based on the calculations of these standard deviations, when we get into this high, high in this high two level of the quant pivots, there's usually a high probability that we're going to snap right back to it. So you can see that we actually went a little bit above it. We actually came into the monthly a quant pivot label, which is the first standard deviation from the opening of the month. And then as soon as we got into that level right here, we came all the way back down and we stopped right there at that weekly L1, which is the standard deviation of support. And also what is super interesting, and let me show you quickly here, you can see that the NASDAQ composite actually came all the way into the, into the breakout level from November, 2020. So after that breakout level, we had a really strong rally right, kind of the head and shoulder stopping pattern right here on the neckline, which was tested right here and rejected. Now we're testing that breakout level. So what is the expectation around these levels? The expectation is that after a really strong move to the downside, because this was a really strong move, it was something around a 10% move from this, from this swing high to this swing low, I'm expecting a bounce, right? We are right at, at a level that we could expect that there's gonna be some demand and maybe we can expect a, a bounce coming into these levels again. Maybe we can expect a little bit more into this congestion level. And then perhaps we're going to roll over. But chasing some shorts all the way down here into support, I don't think that's a high probability idea. I think that we probably are going to see some bounce or perhaps we're going to see some consolidation around this level, perhaps a flag before breaking to the downside again. Now, why do I think that we're going to continue to move lower? Let me show you really quickly. Right here we have, this is, this is Marketsmith. And you can see that I have the NASDAQ composite. And you can see that the, that the selling volume of, this, of, the, of, the, of Friday, uh, comparing it to Thursday, was somewhere around the same selling volume. But I want to show you here is the weekly chart. And you can see on the weekly chart that the, that the, that the volume in the sell side has been increasing, right? So we are continue to move down on increasing volume. That, that that signals, that is telling us that we have a lot of distribution. And the moving averages that I have here, I have the 10 week, I have the 30 week, and I have the 40 week. And you can see right here that we got rejected right there at that 30 and that 40 week, and that we continue to move lower. Given that we're having so much distribution, I think that any bounce that we see in the market is probably going to be an opportunity to sell or to sell some of your long positions if you still have some some of them. So that's what the market is telling us. The market is telling us that we are in heavy distribution and any rally into that decline in 10 week is probably going to be an opportunity to, to set some shorts or to get out of some long positions. Uh, and now let's start looking at the SPY. So that's what I'm seeing in the, in the, in the NASDAQ composite. Now let's take, let's take a quick look at the, at the SPY and you can see the SPY right here. We had a, we had a hammer candle right here on good volume, especially when, when I have this dot on my chart, that means that there was a lot of accelerating volume to the upside. And last time that we had one of those was this candle right here. So what happened, we actually had some, some we actually have some control, consolidation, kind of a mini base. And then we actually have a rally into that declining 50. 
So actually, that's what I'm expecting here right now, right? We you can see right here that the that the spy is trading on a range, on a on a range to basically you can see right the the the, the highs are right here, the lows are right here, and as long as we don't take out this candle right here, I think there's a probability that we're gonna we're gonna rally into this decline in 50 somewhere around this 440 into this congestion area, and then perhaps we're gonna continue to move lower. Why do I think that? basically coming into what we saw in the NASDAQ composite that we're seeing a lot of distribution and also that the MOXIE indicator continues to trade below zero. As long as the MOXIE indicator continues to trade below zero, that means that there's more energy to the downside and the market might continue to trade lower. But for now, I'm expecting a little bit of a bounce, perhaps into these levels or perhaps into this congestion area or that declining 50 daily moving average. Now let's take a quick look at the QQQs. And you can see that these are basically kind of showing the same. Uh, you can see that the QQQs actually undercut this low. But where we do stop, look right here what was support. Support was right there at that weekly quant pivot label L1, which is basically the standard deviation, one standard deviation coming off from the, from the weekly opening. So I'm expecting that we actually also bounce here in the market. And, and if we take a quick look in the QQQs, you can see that we are also testing kind of that breakout level from 2020. So I'm expecting a little bit of a bounce here in this ETF. And then perhaps after we get a bounce, perhaps we're gonna get a bounce all only to the to the highest range of the of the of this consolidation zone. And then perhaps we're gonna roll over, or maybe we're gonna get a, a bounce all the way to this congestion area and somewhere around that declining 50 daily moving average and then perhaps we will continue to roll over but remember where are we coming from we already had a really strong move to the downside so i'm doing i'm expecting a little bit of a bounce or perhaps we're gonna just get some consolidation and then a continuation to the downside now let's take a quick look i also have here the the dow not a lot to, not a lot to see on the dow you can see that the mox indicator continues to be below zero we have a squeeze that is firing short we are kind of holding these levels right here, but we are below a declining 50 daily moving average. And you can see that we actually got rejected at that 50, uh, at that declining 50 daily moving average. So any bounce into these declining moving averages is probably gonna be an opportunity to set up some short positions. And then going into the IWM, if, you, if we can see here the IWM, and let me just remove this line right here and let me set a new line. You can see that we are here, we have the kind of the breakout level from, from the COVID base, right? We can call this the COVID base. And then we had a really strong breakout. Maybe most likely we're gonna test that level. I don't see why not, right? We're basically breaking below this, this, this kind of a bear flag formation. But I do think that we're probably gonna see a bounce and then we're gonna see the move to the downside. Or of course the market could just continue to move lower and accelerate, to, and accelerate to the downside, but there's nothing bullish about this chart right here, right? The MOX indicator continues to trade below zero. The momentum is down. You can see increase in the selling volume, and we're basically below all those key moving averages. And you can see right here, we came that move that we saw after the Fed was coming into a decline in 21 moving average, and that ended up being a perfect opportunity to short. So now let's take a look at some of the of the ETFs that I want to show you, let's take a look at at USO, which is kind of the only place that I see that we might get some continuation to the upside. You can see right here that the MOX indicator is actually above zero. You can see that we have a squeeze that is rising, and also we you can see that the price hold that fifty that rising fifty daily moving average. And as you can see that we continue to form a really nice base here, right? I think that the pivot that you have to watch is eighty two point forty eight, and then we have another pivot level at 80, 87, 84. And given that this has been consolidating for some time, you can see the higher lows on price. I think that this is almost ready for a breakout. And I think that you can actually buy the breakout here and look for more upside, or you can wait probably for a pullback into that rising eight exponential moving average or that 21 exponential moving average. And then perhaps that's going to be a really nice opportunity to get some, some long positions in USO and then continue to look for more upside. And if we take a look at the hourly chart, this is the hourly chart, you can see that the MOX indicator in the hourly chart is also above zero. So that's a great indication. And you can see the higher lows in price right here as, as soon as also seeing in price and also seeing in the momentum indicator. So this is looking like a really nice breakout opportunity. So now let's 
take a look at another ETF that I wanted to show you, and this is UNG. And right, we had a really strong move in UNG, right? It was pretty, pretty strong, right? We had this breakout from this base. We have a crazy move to the upside. And now that I'm something that I'm watching in, in, in UNG, right? We have the pullback into that 20, into that 21 exponential moving average right here. We had another move to the upside. But uh, for you guys that have been following me, I always take a look at the hourly chart in the Moxie. And you can see that price. Right, we can see that price was actually making a higher high, but the MOX indicator actually make a lower high. And that's a bearish divergence, right? So something that that is telling me is to not ch to, to don't chase this name all the way up here. And you can see that we actually, right, we had a strong move to the upside, seems like, seemed like a breakout, but the MOX indicator was telling us that there was not enough energy to chase this as a breakout. And now you can see that in this candle right here, we close below these pivot right here, which is 28.15 on increasing volume and the momentum. You can see that the momentum in the squeeze was also lower while the price was higher. So this is telling me that perhaps UNG, this is actually a short setup that you can probably short it here, set your stop at the, at, the, at the top of this candle and then look for a continuation into that 21 exponential moving average or maybe even that 50 moving average. So I wouldn't be chasing anything here in UNG. Now let's take a look at TLT and let's take a, let's better take a look at TNX, right? A lot of people have been talking about TNX. You can see that we are actually breaking out from this small shelf that we have here in 2.95. I mean, we can see that this is all, this is actually trading at 3.12. So very strong moving TNX. However, something that I'm looking here, we're kind of having a divergence in the Moxie, right? And I don't know how powerful is this going to be, right? You can see that the, that the price in the TNX continues to move higher. However, the Moxie continues to make lower highs. We're, we're barely over zero. This makes me think that there's a probability that we're going to see a pullback in the TNX and that perhaps will come with a, with a rally, with a short covering rally or with a bounce in the market. And we're gonna see a little bit of a bounce in the QQQ, in the SPY and wherever. And then after the TNX it pulls back, then perhaps we, we are gonna see that showing opportunity on equities. But that's something that I'm watching here, something really interesting. And now let's take a quick look we're going to take a quick look at the VIX and the UBXY, and then we're going to be done with the video. So first of all, here is the VIX. And something that I really like to, to see in the VIX, right? You can see that we had a squeeze, right? We had the squeeze right here. We had the MOX indicator that was rising, had a really strong move coming into these tops right here. However, what I'm watching in the VIX, you can see that the VIX wasn't able, right? The market make a lower low, but the VIX wasn't able to make a higher high. And that's kind of a divergence that I'm looking here. And that also goes with the thesis that we might actually see uh, a short covering rally or a bounce in the market. And let me show you the, the hourly chart right here. I have the hourly chart in the VIX. And you can see kind of a head and shoulder stopping pattern. And what I love about the Moxie is that when we have a head and shoulder stopping pattern in any instrument, when the Mox indicator is actually going lower somewhere around that right shoulder, that's usually a really nice signal that this might come that this might come in a little bit. So I'm actually looking for a for a for a pullback in the VIX and a short covering rally on equities, basically a bounce. And then if we take a look at the UVXY, you can see that the UVXY continues to get rejected at that 200 daily moving average. And you can see here that we actually had a move up, we have a move above it, but then we close below it on really good volume. And then you can see that the UBXY was also unable to make a higher high, but I think this 1976 level is gonna be an interesting level. But for now, I think that the UBXY is gonna pull back probably somewhere around this 21 exponential moving average at least. If not, we're gonna come all the way down here to this base. And now let's take a look at the hourly and you can see basically something very similar to the VIX, right? We can kind of have this head and shoulder stopping pattern and the Mox indicator is already moving lower on the right shoulder. So I'm expecting a little bit of a pullback, perhaps all the way to that 200 hourly, because this is the hourly chart on the UVXY. And now that we already took a look at most of the, of the, of the things that I want to show you, let's take a look at the pull call ratio. 
And a lot of people are telling that there is, a, there is not enough, there is, that there is still a lot of complacency in the market. But we actually can see, right, when this, this line that I have here is the 10 daily moving average. And usually when this 10 daily moving average gets above, above 90, there's there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of bearish sentiment in the market, right? Because we have to be. I know that we have not get a, a crazy extreme level all the way to 130 or one or 120. However, we have been consolidating above this level for a while. That means that a lot of people have been holding puts for some time. So that that signals some bearish. Some, some bearish sentiment in the market. However, I do think that maybe when we get a capitulation move, the, this put call ratio is probably going to move somewhere around 130, somewhere around 120. And probably we're going to take out the highs of the year today in the put call ratio. But this jump that we saw right here on Friday, I think that also is a good signal that we're probably going to see a bounce and the put call ratio is going to come in a little bit. And then perhaps when we actually get a capitulation move, we're going to see a really strong spike. And now let's take a look at the EAI and the HYG, which are the bond spreads. And you can see that this is trying to break out, which is actually not a bullish, a bullish sign for the market. This, mean, this basically means in really kind of a summary that investors are embracing less risk. And that's why we can, that's why we can see that these spreads are, are, are widening. So basically this is not a great signal. This was the COVID. You can see that anytime that we get these these crazy moves in the in the bond spreads, that's usually not a good sign for the market. And that probably suggests that we're going to see more downside right here, as long as this continues to break to the upside. And now quickly, let's take a look at the MFI, which is the percent of stocks above the 50 daily moving average. And you can see that most of the times when we get capitulation, we usually see this somewhere around 10 or 5%, which is down here. And now we're trading around, around 22, but we're kind of getting there. Let's see if in the next couple of weeks we can get that capitulation moves with when when this is when these trades will somewhere around 10 and 5, we usually get some really nice buying opportunities. And then finally, take let's take a look at the SKU, which basically the SKU um, uh, is basically the premiums that the institutions are paying or that we are paying for protection. And anytime that we're somewhere around around these 145 to 150, that means that they're paying a lot for protection and they're expecting a lot of volatility. And you can see that the skew is actually coming down, right? So we wanna see the skew somewhere around here. That's usually when we get the best buying opportunities. So always, so also keep that in mind, but it's encouraging that the skew is starting to come down a little bit. So basically guys, my outlook for the market, right? My outlook for the market is that we will continue to see, I think that we will continue to see some downside. However, Given that we had a really, really strong move to the downside already, I think that most likely we're going to see a bounce. I don't know how strong that bounce is going to be as, as we saw early on, on, on April and late on March, we had a really, really strong short covering rally. So perhaps we're going to see an, another short covering rally. Kind of the line, it, or kind of the line in the sun for me is that declining 50 daily moving average. So keep that, keep that moving average on your charts and let's just see what the market wants to do. Keep your, risk small, keep your risk small and always, always remember to manage your positions correctly. And if you don't feel comfortable with this kind of volatility, just, just wait it out. There are going to be so many opportunities when this correction is finally over. And we're going to have some really, really nice, month, nice months with some really nice sustained uptrend. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you on future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.